You know when you see a familiar serial killer story in a movie trailer and say, yeah, I've seen that one before. But then you see that based on a true events line, you pay attention and realize that it's actually not that familiar or easy. And you go like, what kind of a twisted douchebag would do that to people? When I know there's a movie based on or inspired by a true story, I don't know why, but I become very curious to watch it. I think it's because I want to experience and see at least a part of what the characters went through. Today, our movie is based on a true story, so allow me to share my personal opinion about it. This is Megan back at it again with you guys, and today we're discussing the review of He Went That Way. Let's get right into it. The film is a new thriller slash crime titled He Went That Way. It's commonly referred to or categorized as a crime, suspense, and thriller tale. However, don't set your expectations too high with this one. We see a strong cast, but it wasn't exceptionally large. He Went That Way is directed by the late director Jeffrey Darling, or Jeff Jeffrey Darling. Unfortunately, Jeff passed away in March 2022. I believe the film started shooting in 2021 because the cast began sharing pictures from the film on their accounts in 2021. So I don't think Jeff had the chance to attend the film's private screening. To be honest, I haven't seen many works by director Jeff. He only made a couple of films and that's it. This one here, I think was his biggest project so far. It's so bad that he didn't look to witness it coming out to light. Life is not fair, huh? The screenplay is by Evan N. Wiener, featuring the young Australian actor Jacob Elordi in the lead role. Jacob plays the impulsive criminal actor a character, Bobby, in our film. Also starring in the cast is American actor and producer Zachary Quinto, who portrayed Jim, or Jimmy, the calm and kind character in the film. Zach is well known for his role as Captain Spock in the Star Trek movies. But that's it. The entire film revolves around Quinto and Jacob. Oh, I forgot. The chimpanzee Spanky as well. The film heavily relies on these three, with some brief appearances by other characters, like a cameo by the Canadian star Patrick J. Adams, who played the character Saul. In a nutshell, the movie leans heavily on these three main characters, with some brief appearances by others, making up about a quarter of the film. One notable guest appearance is Patrick J. Adams, who played Saul. He went that way movie review. In the trailer, I didn't quite grasp the story or even have a clue about what it might be about. I understood that it's a movie based on a true story, but what exactly is it? It wasn't clear enough in the trailer, and that sparked even more curiosity out, for, out of me. All right, let's get into it. The story is set in the summer of 1964, where we see Quinto, who plays the character Jim, driving his car on a desert road. We learn that he's traveling, and in the car with him is a chimpanzee named Spanky. While on the road, he encounters another traveler, Jacob, who portrays Bobby. Jim, the good guy and brave guy, decides to take Bobby along. However, we realize that Bobby is a criminal, and the two characters are quite different. This is where things start to go south, and the adventures begin on their journey. I won't delve into details to avoid spoilers. The film, as I mentioned earlier, is based on real events. Throughout, I was waiting to see the dangerous element that the plot revolves around, but I didn't see that. This was a significant reason for the events feeling a bit dragged, but that's what it's about in the true events-based story. It was a crime that happened in real life, which makes it very irritating, to the point that drives you insane, and eager to know what happens to the victims or the killer himself. I felt lost most of the time in the film, Wondering what Jim and Bobby wanted. Why are they, what are they trying to achieve? The movie is filled with moments and scenes that are not pleasant, uncomfortable, and chaotic in a challenging way. The events themselves seem disordered. I honestly felt that the film lacked coherence. One thing I focus on when a movie is set in a period other than the present is the attention to detail, direction, music, and overall craftsmanship. In this aspect, I felt that the film excelled. The attention to 1960s details included clothing, hairstyles, the look of the road, cars, and set decorations was impressive. It truly made me feel like I'd gone back to the 1960s. So I can say that the direction in this regard was good and acceptable. 
As for the performance, Quinto, who plays Jim, delivers an acceptable performance. Somehow he made it look so easy to play that kind and brave man. He didn't give up on Bobby, despite the continuous horror he flipped on him. However, what bothered me was his excessive coldness. In general, Jim's character didn't have much depth to begin with. He was a man on a journey with a chimpanzee. Waiting to reach a destination, he ran into a psycho serial killer who turned him into his driver. Jacob, undoubtedly a talented and promising actor, didn't impress me much in this film. From my perspective, his performance wasn't appealing, and I don't think this role suited him at all. It was evident that Bobby's character had psychological issues, which I liked that they explored. However, I felt that they presented his story in a very ordinary way. Could they not have acted out the story instead of having him narrate it? One of the things that bothered me was that I, as the viewer, had to build the mental images and scenes based on the spoken words. I needed to see them in front of me, not just hear them. Do you understand? Regarding the musical effects, many times they were enjoyable in specific scenes. The choices of 60 songs was excellent, and I found myself enjoying them, adding some of the lists to my favorite songs. The pace of events, as I mentioned earlier, was slow and monotonous from the beginning to the end. I genuinely felt the film was shot all in one day in one location, with repetitive dialogues focusing on the chimpanzee and how Bobby needs to improve and develop his character. I sensed repetition throughout the film. The characters' reactions were the same, and the personalities of Jim and Bobby were consistently repetitive. It was irritating. To be fair, I liked that Bobby attempted to be better in the last quarter of the film, but he quickly reverted to being violent and crazy criminal. The screenplay didn't do justice to making the film engaging. The dialogue was extremely weak between the actors, and I found the comedic additions in the script supposed to be funny to be very silly. I want to talk about the suspense and thrill because the film is categorized as such. Unfortunately, they were not present sufficiently or in a way that created tension and fear. I didn't see anything exciting through the hour and a half, to be honest. The first action scene between Jim and Bobby, where Bobby is supposedly choking and hitting Jim, looks quite ridiculous. It seemed like Bobby was just patting him, not choking or hitting him. The scene of Bobby hitting Jim in general were very weak and trivial. In the end, I still didn't understand what the story was trying to convey or what it revolved around. Was it about the chimpanzee? Bobby, Jim, or what exactly? If the message was no matter how much a criminal lies about people, his end is prison, then what's new in that? From my perspective, a story like this could wrap up in a half an hour. In the end, the film was chaotic, lacking anything exciting, and I didn't gain anything or enjoy it. He Went That Way was released on January 5th in theaters, the duration of approximately one and a half hours. You can watch it in your free time, but it's not a must watch. This concludes a quick review of the new crime and thriller film, He Went That Way. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Let us know in the comments if you've seen the film and don't forget to share your comments below. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next time. Peace.